articles of 19. Uh, please rise for the invocation by Mr. Neville. Anyone who reads newspapers or watches the news realizes our country is facing many crises. We are besieged 24-7 with news about one crisis or another, and this week is no exception. Consequently, I'd like to offer our prayers this evening for our elected leaders. This week alone, the President and Vice President are out of the country meeting with North Korean and Venezuelan leaders about crises in, in both those countries. The House is voting on a national emergency resolution. Senate and House committees are holding hearings with the President's convicted former attorney regarding Russia's alleged interference in U.S. elections. Other co congressional committees are meeting with the country's pharmaceutical CEOs about excessively high drug prices. And another Senate committee met with Fed Chairman Powell about the economic outlook for our country. Certainly a full plate for any elected officials. My prayer this evening, then, is that our elected officials approach their offices with the compassion, integrity, and wisdom to make decisions supportive of their oath, our country's values, and always in the best interest of our country and its citizens. In this we pray. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Neville. Fire evacuation notice. We have two exits from the chambers, one to the rear of the chambers, out to the, down the stairs and out to the, out to the green or to my left, your right, left down the stairs, and out to the rear parking lot. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Neville? Present. Mr. Ryder? Here. Mr. Renier? Present. Mrs. DePoe? Present. Mr. Rutledge? Here. Mrs. Riley? Here. Mrs. LeBlanc? Here. Mrs. Hernandez? Here. Chairman Cruzel? Here. Number six board guests, Mr. Dresick, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a lot of guests tonight, as you can see, so I'll start the evening by welcoming our Cash Student Leadership Training Conference. Uh, tonight we welcome Elaine Helberg, Eli Whitney Guidance Counselor, Karen Salgowski, a Prudence Crandall Guidance Counselor, Leonel Torres, our Parkman Guidance Counselor, and Enfield High Teen Leadership Teachers Mark Duby and Tony Allegro to the board. They're going to introduce any students that may be present, and I don't want to steal your thunder, so you're up. Don't all rush the table all together. <laughs> Come on up. Don't be shy. There's a, there's a handheld mic there. If someone's going to talk, they need to talk into the mic. Is it there? There's, a, there's another one up here if you need it. There we go. Anyone want the mic? Sure. I'm Elaine Helberg. Um, I'm the counselor at Whitney. So what we have here are our fourth grade leadership groups um, from all, all three schools, um, and of course the high school kids as well who help with the conference. Um, so what we do is every fall the fourth grade teachers will pick a student from their classroom who represents leadership um, in the buildings. And so these guys were picked by their teachers this year. And on January 10th, they attended the CAS Leadership Conference over at Nantuck. So um, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Okay. Hi, my name is Connor. Hi, my name is Mia. Hi, my name is Kendall. Hi, my name is Kelsey. Hi, my name is Sophia. I'm Ms. Gustafson Sargowski. I'm the uh, school counselor over at Prudence Crandall. And I have brought two friends with me today, and they are? Hi, my name is Anna. Hi, my name is Julia. I'm Leonel Torres. I'm the school counselor at Parkman, and I have three kids with me. Hi, my name is Isabella. Hi, my name is Chase. Hi, my name is Adam. We are fourth grade students. We attended the leadership conference on January 10th. We were chosen chosen by our teachers to attend. We had 
three sessions, two in the morning and one in the afternoon. It was a very busy day. We were with students from all over the state of Connecticut. Most of the sessions were hands-on and interactive. One of the sessions was about Hawaiian culture, how people interact there, and we learned some dances. In one of the sessions, I learned about what it means when someone tells you what to do, and when do you have to make your own decisions. The day ended with an assembly. The assembly had two people showing bullying behaviors. It was interactive. They shared ways to avoid bullying behaviors and ways to help others when bullied. The purpose of the day was to become better leaders in our classrooms and our school communities. I'm Tony Allegro. I teach um, social studies at Enfield High. I also run the diversity club at Enfield High, and uh, we brought some of our students. I'll have them introduce themselves. I'm Mohammed Yeah. I'm Mahmoud Asabad. So we come from the Diversity Club um, at Enfield High School, and we uh, were chosen to go to Aznantuk and teach these kids about uh, what diversity is. And we came up with a little uh, group, group task for them to like work on, and it was, it was meant to be a little unfair to teach them what some people go through and what other people's don't go through. Um, and it just meant to show the diversity that we have and what we need to recognize in everybody's uh, opportunities in life. Thank you. Uh, I'm Mark Duby, uh, teen leadership teacher at Enfield High School. And these are my students who came and presented leadership skills to the elementary students that were at CAS. Uh, we've been lucky enough to go back year after year, and I think we've built a great relationship with CAS. And um, this group of young people did a remarkable job, and I'd like uh, to let them tell you who they are and what they did. Um, my name is Amy. Uh, I'm Alex Ferris. I'm Tierney. Hi, my name is Lasai Robinson. So basically, we for our session, we taught the kids like how to be a leader, and so. Some of the parts were we were writing notes to others to show your appreciation to others. We taught them how to write a speech, and they actually presented their speech upon volunteer. And then we also taught them how to tie a tie. What else did we do? How to listen, too, yeah. Oh, how to listen. Yeah, we told them there's an acronym that we use and about first impressions. So we did a lot. Anybody else need to do? All right, I think that's it. Thank you very much. No, oh, whoa, 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 don't, 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 don't go yet, don't go yet. No, you're not done yet. First thing first, I want, I want all the kids to come up here and, and, and you can see yourself on TV. There's a big TV up there too. So line up here so they can get, a, so you can get a nice picture of you guys. Get right in front of us. Scrunch up so they could, everybody's taking pictures, so scrunch up. Are we good? All right. So now, so now don't go back to your seats yet. Just stand back where you were before, because we have a few questions. Just, you guys aren't going to get off that easy. You've got to test. So who wants to start? Mr. Renier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so congratulations. I feel like we could devote one night to each group of you and just go on for hours about the accomplishments that you guys are doing. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, not only are you able to uh, do this for yourself, but you're also able to do this for others. Uh, for the, uh, the guys who are on the other spectrum, I know a couple of you guys from sports. And uh, I can say that not only in the field of academics, but also on the court as well. Uh, I've seen your leadership go. Uh, 
speaks volumes to who you guys are. So to everyone standing up here and to all the groups you guys are a part of, congratulations. Enfield's a better town because of each and every one of you. So thank you guys for being part of it. Mr. Ryder. I also wanted to recognize and thank our guidance counselors. And I think that you guys do an amazing job. And I've worked with all three of you. I've been in each of your buildings for a couple of years now. And uh, I'm proud of these friends. And I'm proud of you guys. So thank you for your help with this. And thank you to our high schoolers that connected the dots between these guys and where you're heading and the things that you can bring to the table. It doesn't have to come from adults. I think more learning is done through peers. So thank you for that. Mr. Neville. Congratulations again. And, and uh, like uh, uh, Mr. Ryder said, it's nice to see uh, the, the leaders at the high school teaching the leaders at this level. And I think that's the best way to do it with peers. You know, you guys are role models in terms of leadership. And with these youngsters, I'm sure you will always be role models to them as leader, good leaders. So thank you. You make us proud. Thank you. Miss, Miss Riley. <clears throat> I want to say congratulations, like everybody else did, to fourth graders. That's very impressive, the work that you guys are doing. And thank you to the high schoolers for being great role models to them. Um, I did have a couple questions for the high schoolers. Um, you said that you had an acronym about listening. Could you um, tell me what that was? Somebody's got to grab the mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we use an acronym called SOLAR. It's about sitting up. And just like open your open posture and keeping eye to contact with people. And it's just like, I don't know, it's very easy for kids to understand. We thought it was very important to teach because it's something that's used every day and it's needed to be, you know, uh, like a responsible person in society. So, yeah, that's great. Awesome. And then um, what kind or can you give me an example of a task that you did with the kids to show diversity? Uh, so we had six groups of students, or we split them up in, into six groups, and we had six bags of, um, of like school material supplies. Um, it ranges from colored pencils to pencils to erasers to glitters, markers, all that stuff. And with one bag, you have only pencils. The other bag, you have a little bit more pencils and maybe even colored pencils. And it goes on until you have like scissors, glues, and all the materials that you need. And it basically helps the kids realize after they're done with their uh, withdrawing what they agreed on um, that the prettiest is the prettiest for a reason. It's because uh, they have more uh, more resources, yeah. and that it helps them realize. The difference is that they have, we have in our community. I mean, Enfield itself, you could see you got the poor and mm -hmm. the rich. I think that uh, that um, that project like shows them how to be open-minded and to recognize these differences. That's awesome. And you guys all came up with your tasks and presentations. That's great. That's amazing. And thank you to the wonderful teachers that we have and the guidance counselors. And thank you to all the parents for being so supportive of your kids. Thank you very much. Ms. LeBlanc. Uh, again, I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm very proud of you all. I think this was a, a, a really big deal. And um, I started working for a company three years ago, and I went to an all-day diversity training event. And we kind of did the same things you guys did, believe it or not. And it really left a big impact on me. And I think what people under don't understand or I hope that they would understand is this experience for all of you whether you're in high school or whether you're in fourth grade is going to stay with you for a long time and is going to help shape you onto your next chapter of your lives like if you guys are going off to college or into the workforce and as you guys get ready to go to the middle school um, I think you've had great um, leadership uh, from your guidance counselors and great and great Enfield high leadership and um, I think that it's kind of like Rachel's challenge you guys can be that chain reactions that happens within the schools um, you know to keep uplifting culture and acceptance and compassionate and appreciate diversity in the town of Enfield. So I thank you all for that. Mr. Rutledge. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, again, like everybody else has says, congratulations to you all. Um, this sounds like a wonderful program. You know, leadership skills, communication skills, 
a lot of times they can't necessarily be taught, but they have to be elicited. And the fact that a lot of you folks are starting at such a young age, you know, speaks volumes for the potential that we have in this town for the future. So I just want to congratulate you all for that. And, you know, on to, you know, diversity. You know, I'd love, you know, maybe one time come to the board, I'd love to hear more about what you do in that diversity club. I think many of us, you know, would agree it'd be a pretty boring world if everybody just thought the same. And if you're trying to make improvements to things, if you have five people sitting at a table and they're all saying the exact same things, nothing's going to, you know, nothing's really going to change. You need to have that diversity of opinion, bring different perspectives and points of view to the table. Um, so I'd love to hear more about what you folks do. And, uh, you know, again, thank you to you all and congratulations. All right, so I will add that you guys did a great job with the microphone, speaking into it. I heard everyone's name. It was great. And again, thank you all for your hard work and bringing this good news and to our meeting. And you, you can, you are excused. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Dresick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And next to talk about our Book Buddy Benches program, I welcome uh, John Dague, our st district wide STEAM coordinator, and someone who's familiar with these chambers, I believe, is also going to accompany him. That would be the Honorable Former Mayor, Mr. Copen. Mr. Mayor Emeritus. John, are you coming up here? <laughs> now, now, name and address for the record. <laughs> I always wanted to say, is this on? <laughs> um, good evening. I'm Scott Copen, and I come uh, before you this evening as the president of the Rotary Club of Enfield. It's um, one of the... Uh, one of the community involvement things that I uh, have picked up since uh, leaving this chamber. And uh, it's a great honor to actually serve as the club's president. And I'm here to, um, <coughs> to present to you um, a district grant that the Rotary Club of Enfield has been uh, working on with the town of Enfield, with Enfield Public Schools, and uh, with, with the Network Against Domestic Abuse. Um, just a little bit about Rotary. So the Rotary Club of Enfield is a, a, a service uh, organization here in town made up primarily of business professionals. We have uh, approximately 54 members and uh, we are in our 91st year of existence here in the town of Enfield. And uh, everything, every project, every dollar that Rotary raises has to be spent within the Enfield community. And in one way that uh, we have the ability to give back to our community as Rotarians is uh, through a district grant program. And the interesting thing about the district grant is when you're a Rotarian and you donate money to the Rotary Foundation, which is the international organization for Rotary, they hold on to the funds uh, for three years and then 50% of those funds that were donated from the district, so our region of northern Connecticut, western Massachusetts, three years later comes back to the district in the form of money for district grants. And then the individual clubs apply uh, for projects that they want to do to enhance their community. This year, um, so as, as the club president, uh, it, it became my task to identify a, a district grant. Some district grants of the past that you'll uh, recognize across town. The Rotary Garden at the Senior Center. That wonderful accessible playground at the Central Library. Uh, the walking path that's around uh, the Central Library. And actually last year's district grant project was to install a new prep table and kitchen sinks at Enfield Loaves and Fishes. Uh, Rotary does a lot of work with the town of Enfield, with Enfield Public Schools. We have a big focus on, on literacy. Um, so this year I, I looked at it and I had, uh, it was a suggestion that came out of the club. And then I had a very timely phone call with one of your members, Scott Ryder. And I think the question was, Scott, have you ever heard of a buddy bench? And he said, well, yes. And by uh, um, just at the same time, they had just held the Hasville Memorial 5K road race, and he introduced to me the collaborative effort between the Hasville Memorial School PTO and Enfield High School for the buddy benches. So I stole his idea. 
um, we wrote up a grant and um, the idea of the buddy bench to, to give some folks what a buddy bench is um, so in, and this comes from the district grant uh, paperwork that you actually have in your packet but I'll read it for uh, the folks at home what is a buddy bench there are many things that parents worry about when sending their child to school a common concern is will my child have someone to play with at recess for some students, recess can be a stressful time as they navigate the social groups and find an activity they enjoy doing. Enter the Buddy Bench. A worldwide project, the Buddy Bench was the brainchild of a first grade student in 2013 who wanted to eliminate loneliness and foster friendship on the playground. The rules of the bench are simple. If you need a, rec a recess buddy, sit on the bench. Through a proposed program, corn, um, yeah, you sit on the bench. Uh, through a proposed program coordinated by the Network Against Domestic Abuse, headquartered in Enfield, all elementary school students will learn about the Buddy Bench Pledge and sign with their thumbprint on a poster that will hang in the school's hallway. They will vow that if they see someone sitting on the bench, they will invite them to play. And when invited to play, the, the student cannot decline the offer. So the, the district grant itself uh, is part funded by the district and part funded by the local Rotary Club. The grant is uh, $6,500 and uh, we actually received uh, $2,400 from, uh, from the district to help in our efforts. The, um, the benches are going to be across town. They're going to be at um, all of the elementary schools, including Head Start and, uh, and the Early Childhood Living Center at, or Education Center at Stowe. Uh, we've also incorporated buddy benches at our uh, parochial schools, and there'll also be a couple at parks and playgrounds across the town of Enfield. I believe now the number is 18. 18 that we'll be building 18. And I believe in the grant we may have said 16, but Rotary will, will fund uh, the, the entire amount. Uh, this was, or this is a very collaborative effort. So, I mean, thanks to Scott, he introduced me to the concept of John and his students and Enfield Public Schools. So Enfield High School students will build the benches. I'm gonna let them explain the, the whole effort. Um, one of our members has been the liaison to the elementary schools and has worked with each principal on identifying the need. Um, we'll coordinate a presentation day. We've done the same with the town of Enfield, same with the, with the parochial schools. And then we have one of our members, um, Rich T. Katz. He will be um, staying in touch with John and uh, helping or assisting, watching over the building of the benches. Um, so we're really excited about it. And then the one other collaborative piece is working with the Network Against Domestic Abuse too. We've got some funds for them to incorporate the concept into their program that they already have in the Enfield Public Schools and to uh, introduce the Buddy Bench concept. And that will be an ongoing uh, training or introduction uh, year after year. So with that, I'll turn it over to John. All right. Thank you. For the actual fun stuff, the building of the benches. So with me here tonight, I have Dale Fuller, who's one of our Wood Tech students, and he'll be explaining the building process. And I just want to say that uh, the schools in the tech ed department were very excited about this project because it gives us an opportunity, one, to get into some production work. Normally, when we do our woodworking projects, we're building one-off projects. And in here, we get to have use a different set of skills in order to build 18 uh, similar type benches. And also, it lets us show off some new grant equipment that we have. So um, before we get started, and I have uh, Dale explain, I have two items to bring around. So the 3D. Uh, hold, hold on, do we, Kathy, do we want to drop the screen and let the people see or? So the 3D printed model that goes around was one that we had developed in helping to figure out an initial design uh, for the bench and that was brought to the rotary to get a sense of what a, a finished product uh, may look like. Now in our course we have a couple different courses involved in uh, building this project. 
for construction, we have our Wood Tech One, and we have three students uh, currently working on the design process now. In a second phase, the back top slat of the bench is going to have uh, Buddy Bench CNC engraved into the back. That'll be a little bit later phase because we need to reconfigure one of the machines in order to handle the uh, larger material. And then that metal plaque that's coming around is actually, that's uh, CNC laser etched into the metal. And we have students in our graphics three department, uh, Billy is going to be the one working that. So um, for right now, I'm gonna turn this over to Dale, who's going to explain the process that we're using in order to make a lot of these parts consistent. So the process we're using, we start off with planing the wood, which you're planing it down to a certain width, which is what? This thickness for the legs is yeah. one and three quarters, and the seats are seven eighths. And then after that, we join them so we can cut them on a table saw. And then after that, we are drilling pocket screws. So pocket screws are, um, we're using the pocket screws, so we can drill into the wood, but the screw head will not be exposed, so you won't see it. And um, after that, we're using a big jig to um, put the legs together, so and, or a template. Yep, template and, that's marking out for yeah. cutting them. And we're also using a trim router to route the edges into the, temp the template we made actually we can take the router and go around the um, around the actual template and it cuts it to perfect size for every single one and the, uh, that's what our finished leg looks like and um, yeah yeah from there they're just wor working on attaching all of the seat and back panels and one of the other pieces is actually we have a uh, laser engraver machine that we received as part of a grant last year and we're using a, a Ceramark material, so we're spraying the uh, stainless steel with a Ceramark material, and then the laser actually uh, burns that material into the surface, making a permanent weather-resistant plaque that will go for the back. So each bench will have two uh, panels, so there'll be one with the rotary seal that will go on the back side of the bench, and also on the other side of the back of the bench is going to be in an inscription um, from the rotary uh, on the back. So there'll be two metal plaques on each back. And then the top slat on the finished uh, bench will be engraved with the words Buddy Bench. And then as soon as the weather gets warm, we'll take them all outside to, uh, to get stained. <laughs> Hopefully sooner than that. That's awesome. Any questions? Ms. LeBlanc. I have a couple questions. Uh, first, I'll start with my questions. Are they going to be a special color? Are you just going to stain them, or have you guys talked about that? The color option uh, selected for this was actually a cedar tone uh, stain. Yeah. So the material is white oak. Weather very nicely outside. It'll get a little bit darker, but it's a good weather resistant uh, species, and with a cedar tone, they look nice. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I wanted to say is I just this project means so much to me um, just because I think this world needs a little bit more or a lot more compassion lately and nobody ever knows what people are going through and just that one day where somebody might need to sit on that buddy bench and get invited to play could change their whole week around their whole month around even if it's just for the day um, so I love this whole concept I wish we could actually have buddy benches all over the town <laughs> for people who are just having a bad day that need a friend to go sit on that bench, whether they're in elementary school or 35 years old, because, you know, sometimes we all just have those days, right? Um, I just... What a town hall here. Yeah. Can, I think we need one, <laughs> the nine of us. Um, but I just think this concept is amazing, and I really appreciate the Rotary Club for... for you guys do a lot um, for the town. Um, one of the things I've always I've spoken highly of um, is the opportunities that we have at Enfield High School, and um, I know that everything you guys are doing in like the tech ed department in different capacities is huge, and I love the fact that the kids are getting involved 
in not only is it helping them with their education that they want to in, in Wood Tech, um, but it's also knowing that they're giving back to the community and they're giving back to their younger peers. And um, that, for me personally, just means a lot and it goes a long way. So I really appreciate everything you're doing. Um, I can say I know Dale, and so I'm so proud of him for working on this project. I know one of the other students. Um, but I really, Mr. Dagg, this is a, a wonderful opportunity that the high school kids have. And again, Scott, I, I think it's wonderful um, for everything that the Rotary Tournament, or Rotary continues to do uh, for the town of Enfield and, and for the students and the residents. So again, thank you. Mr. Noble. Ditto. I, I think uh, <laughs> she speaks for all of us when she talks about the uh, <clears throat> the motivation behind it and you know, Scott, for the, for the Rotary to dump and you guys do a great job. And I think just to provide that to everywhere and, and you're inclusive, you're including both the uh, park and wrecking, you're including the parochial school. So we're not being selective to just the public schools. I think that's fabulous. John, you know, once again, you, you and your crew do a, a wonderful job. And I think, you know, speaking of the one offs, I mean, that's that's what we all did through Tech Ed and, and to put it in a collaborative way so that they're collaborating to design, to produce and, and uh, to come up with a uh, a production type of model that you're doing is perfect. It's also perfect for the jobs you're going to be ending up doing later on in life, you know. But uh, so my my uh, kudos to all of you, and um, I think giving back to the community and something that's as productive as this, and any of us that have been in the schools understand the need for buddy benches at times. And I think you guys have found a need. If you did borrow the idea from, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we always borrow ideas as educators, don't we, Scott? And uh, and so that's that's a good thing. But it's it's giving something back to the community, and I think teaching all of our kids and staff and stuff to do that is a great thing. So thank you all very much. Uh, Miss Riley, I think this is a phenomenal idea. I'm so sold on it. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to know. Is the bench at a special height for our shorter friends? Actually, that was part of the design consideration. So a standard park bench height is 17 and a half to 18 inches. Mm -hmm. And these were designed, uh, actually some of the literature on buddy benches recommended a 16 inch height, which makes it more accessible. Oh. So um, they were designed at 16 inches. Awesome, great. and. I've been lucky enough to go in the wood shop at the high school and see what they do, and I know that you guys do a phenomenal job in there. And then now seeing the plaque for the rotary, mm -hmm. I thought that was something you bought, like, you know, at a store or something. I didn't know the high school did that. Holy cow. So these things are going to look like, whoa. So I'm excited to see them, and I'm excited to see kids on them and using them. Thank you very much. Mr. Ryder. I just wanted to thank you, Scott, my, my neighbor and friend. Um, I, it was a, a timely phone call, like you said, and I'm glad that this is working out not only for the one or two schools that we first thought about doing this for, but for the entire town. So thank you. And of course, thank you. Thank everybody at the high school. I think this is fantastic. And I'm proud that our, our ideas will be in the schools, backyards, in our town, at the La Magna Center, at Brainerd Park, um, and all the elementary schools um, later this spring. I, I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Well, I thought we started off with a planning and zoning meeting here with the question of color and question of height. <laughs> so we are the Board of Ed, not planning and zoning people. So just let just. Hey, I'm down with anything that I they know. do. That it's going to come out great. I know, but you asked colors and height. It's just something that happens Tuesday nights, not Tuesday nights. Well, I think I want to be able to. Awesome. Well, again, awesome job. Thank you very much. Thank you to the Rotary. Thank you to our shop classes. And great job. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we move on to number seven, Mr. Dresick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll start with a student representative. I believe Dan is the only one here tonight. Matt and Jacqueline had a previous commitment, so you're running solo tonight, Dan. Dan, uh, go ahead. So we have uh, an art show coming up. Uh, we also have a film festival coming up, so the um, new class at Enfield High School, the digital video production class, will be participating. So each student is being asked to submit a 30 to 60 second video uh, for the film festival, which is um, exciting to show off our, our work and um, like choose our best video. 
Um, and the SAT is coming up on March 9th. Thank you, sir. Mr. Dredge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. LaMesa and Dr. Wiley are holding parent presentations about Common Core math for K-2 parents on Tuesday, March 5th at 6.30 p.m. at Henry Barnard. And another presentation for three to five parents uh, on Wednesday, February 27th, weather permitting, uh, and Wednesday, March 13th, uh, enclosed in your packets of the flyers additional information for both parent presentations. Uh, Kite will be holding a transition to kindergarten night. We host a parent education, educator night for children that will start kindergarten in September 2019. Uh, the event will be held at JFK Middle School in the auditorium at 6.30 p.m. The flyers enclosed in your packet with additional information as well. Uh, first readers will hold their next award ceremony on Monday, March 11th at 6 p.m. in the Enfield High Auditorium. Uh, students who have learned how to be independent readers will receive a personal invitation to attend the ceremony this week. And a listing of the March events are in your packet. And that will conclude the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Dresick. Audiences. Mr. T. Katz. Yeah. Bob T. Katz, 815 Woodgate Circle. You can hear me? Yes. Uh, I, I, I asked to be tense, but where is everybody? You know, I had a recent security interview <clears throat> for the bank and the IRS. I do a lot of taxes, pick up taxes in different towns. And <clears throat> the lady going to interview me, I says, you know, I was an altar boy. I was a Boy Scout, and I sang in the choir. Does that count at all? And she says, yeah, that, that, that helps. Anyways, I got approved, so I, anyways. Uh, as a former school board member and former uh, Building Committee member, former Audit Committee member, Citizen Audit Committee. Uh, I, know, I know it's very difficult to improve sco uh, school performance because you get moving people through the system. But Enfield's always been, it's a blue collar labor town. It's never been on top. It's always been down in the, the bottom quarter. Even 1870, some of the history that I've uh, pulled apart so we're, we're always there. I think we're 157th now out of 202 districts, the latest performance thing. But I passed out the Sinfield High School. This was done by Connecticut Mirror. The only thing I'm going to point out, the demographics of this town is changing rapidly. And uh, looking over the, the latest school profile, it's even changing more than what's in this report. But you can pull up any school on the Connecticut Mirror they can give you the performance and the whole, all the statistics on it. Uh, another site you can go to is the New York Times Upshot site. You can put any district in the United States and they tell you, where you, where you how you're performing. Um, if you look up Lexington, Mass, high performing district, but 33% Asian. If you look at one of the lower performing districts, North Dakota, American Indian dominated, very, very very poor performance. So it's a lot of ethnic issues. Uh, Hispanic populations increasing rapidly. The uh, uh, latest article in the Wall Street Journal about uh, uh, fertility of the of, of white Americans, Asian, and uh, Hispanic were below the, the replacement rate. Maine and West Virginia, the death rate exceeds the birth rate. We have a lot of problems in the Northeast. Uh, school population is, is dropping rapidly. It's not, it's not a slow issue. I don't know how, what's going to change it. They try to blame the abortion issue. Abortion's at an all-time low. Uh, the second document that I passed out was, uh, <clears throat> which I didn't bring up with me, was about the uh, Thompsonville High School, the 1873 graduation brochure. Uh, in 1873, Enfield had three high schools, Hazardville High, Thompsonville High, and Enfield Center School. And the, the original school in Enfield was right where Enfield Street School is right now. That was the center of town because Warehouse Point was part of Enfield. The last document, which is very interesting, I just pulled that up, it appeared in a lull newspaper 
uh, and also a Connecticut Mirror. Uh, it's called Novel Suggestions, an essay by Miss Barton on the best method of conducting a school, which is read at the recent meeting of the Enfield Teachers Association at Thompsonville. I didn't know they were that old. It given rise to considerable discussion by its striking and novel views. It was recommended that no exercise should be lar larger, longer than 15 minutes and that singing should be one of the school's exercises. Well, Miss Barton was Clara Barton. She was a Nightingale prima donna. She was a singer, very famous in the world at the time. Uh, at, at this point, about 1890, I didn't see any uh, music in the curriculum at this point, but I'm, I'll, I'm moving further on. I'm up to that point. It was suggested that the pupil of each sex be placed at the same desk and always allowed to assist e each other in their lessons. And at the end of each month, permitted to select new partners if they wished. It was claimed that there would be less trouble in the governing of school, more tidiness in the pupil's appearance, and greater ease in the conversation and intercourse, a word we wouldn't use today in this context, which Mr. would Chairman, be point of, order. of much advantage when they became men and women, it was claimed that... Bob, we're going to have to cut you there. ...where the experiment has been tried and has been attended with its success. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Words have changed over the last hundred years in different contexts. Some words you wouldn't use today in that context. Thank you. Any other audience? I declare the audience closed. Number nine, board member comments. Mr. Noble, do you want to start, or...? Doesn't matter. You have none. All right, we move on to. You actually said that up loud. Mr. Rutledge, save us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I, uh, I just want to address a comment that uh, Tina made about buddy benches. I think there are buddy benches for adults. It's called the uh, benches inside Starbucks. Um, um, I wasn't at the last meeting. We'll and we need one in here. And I'm not going to be at the next one, unfortunately, because I'll be out of town for my anniversary. So these are going to be a little long-winded. So people viewing out there, if you want to go to the bathroom, get some popcorn, by all means, these folks up here are captive. They don't have a choice. Um, so first thing, um, I visit the high school periodically. Um, I'd like to make a request to the chair through perhaps the Joint Facilities Committee. I noticed that one column outside the high school is still dented. Um, and it's been like that, I think, for a couple years now. Um, I know probably in the grand scheme of a lot of things we need to fix might not be the highest priority. Just think that maybe fixing that would help send the message. I mean, I know we're serious about building maintenance, um, but it might just send the message that, you know, this, you know, proverbial crown jewel of the town, if we fix that part up, might just, uh, you know, help us out in the community. Um, second of all, and again, said before, I wasn't at the last meeting when the JFK. Mr. Rutledge. Yep. Mr. Drazek wants I, to address I can it. probably answer that question quickly. The, oh, the, sure. the town is well aware of that. It's mm -hmm. actually tied up in an insurance claim right now. That's oh, why okay. it's been taking so long. That's what I thought. That's what I, exactly good. what I thought, because I asked the same question. So. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right, check that one off the box. Um, you know, I, as I said before, I wasn't at the last meeting. The JFK Middle School debate team came here to present. And, uh, you know, even though I wasn't here to say this, I just want to thank all of them. I think the entire team did a wonderful job this year. And, you know, working with those students was a really gratifying experience. And, you know, the teachers put in so much time to help those students out. And, you know, I definitely look forward to working with them in the next school year. Um, and as debate is really all about communication, you know, it's, you know, it's gotten me thinking. You know, our school motto is that we try to make a difference in Enfield with every child and every day. Um, and that's really something that debate can do. Um, we've seen recently, especially if you watch our town council meetings, um, communications can sometimes get, you know, a little bit heated. They may digress a little bit here and there. And, you know, one reason I love debate so much is, and why it's such an incredible activity, is that it really teaches those robust, informative communication skills. Um, I debated in high school and college. I'm on the board of directors for the Connecticut Debate Association. And I see these students from all around the state learning, you know, skills that are useful no matter what your career aspirations might be. It teaches you how to do research, develop critical thinking and communication skills, and perhaps most importantly, it really highlights the fact that to every argument, there's going to be two sides, and it encourages the people involved, both the judges and the debaters, to listen to both of those sides of an argument um, before making a decision, and frankly, that's something that I think a lot of people in this world could benefit from. Um, another item I'd like to bring up in a way that we can make a difference in our students' lives is, uh, is through our civics curriculum. Um, I had the 
privilege recently of speaking with, I believe his name is pronounced Mr. Sine. He's a um, coordinator in our civics curriculum. And, you know, he, he gave me a wonderful glimpse as to what they do there. And, you know, I, I, I was really impressed. For anybody that says that we're not offering our students fantastic opportunities, you really need to look at what we're doing um, in that part of the curriculum. You know, these students are learning constitution and our political history. They're given insights into the process. They engage in debates through these things they call structured controversies, where students are forced to critically look at both sides of issues. They even run their own campaigns, create platforms, videos, the whole nine yards. If some of us run for re-election, we might use some of these students, you know. You never know, and they do absolutely fantastic work. And, you know, I think this is especially important because I recently read a report from the Woodrow Wilson Foundation. Um, it was given to 41,000 Americans across the country, um, and it was based on the questions on a U.S. citizenship exam. And sadly, only about 40% of the people passed, which, you know, to, to me, that's, that's kind of distressing that our own citizens don't know enough about our history to pass the exam that would make a, you know, an immigrant um, a legal U.S. citizen. So, you know, with that in mind, I'd really like to thank Mr. Sine, um, our teachers in that curriculum, you know, for all the work they do and for getting our students involved, you know, in our history and political process. Um, and along those same lines, too, another way I think we can make a difference is by exposing students and people in general to real-life government scenarios. Um, there's a relatively new organization in this state called Rising Stars for Connecticut's Future. I happen to sit on their board as their first vice chair. And the goal of that organization is to expose students to how government works. Um, and we have some great resources in this town that I think could help that. You know, we have a new assistant town manager. We have offices in town hall. Um, you know, I, I think these are opportunities for our students to learn, not just in the classroom, but actually in the real world. So through the chairman to, I want to say whoever would be the appropriate party, um, I'd love to see if there were ways we could explore giving our students maybe like job shadowing or, you know, week in town hall type opportunities so that they can actually start to learn more about how the gov how government actually works and so they can tie that to what they learn in the classroom. Um, another way I'd like to see us making a difference is through recognition. You know, we saw some wonderful presentations tonight, the students that went to lead the leadership conference. We do a great job of highlighting, you know, our student athletes. But, you know, one thing I'd like to bring up is what about just good old-fashioned academic achievement? Um, students doing well in school, learning, getting their grades up, arguably it's, you know, the most important thing we do as an educational system. And I'd love to see, you know, students being recognized in front of this board. Maybe it's our National Merit Scholarships. Maybe it's people who get into upper echelon universities. Or maybe it's even those students who were like, you know, borderline C students who buckled down and, you know, became, you know, got on the honor roll. Um, Sometimes that level of recognition is all that's needed to push a student to continue to achieve more and more. Um, and given that academics is a primary focus of the school, um, I'd really, you know, I'd really say that those students are just as deserving of recognition as, you know, folks like our student athletes. Um, so, you know, I'd love to see some of those, you know, if we could develop a plan to see some of those students in front of the board as well. Um, and finally, another thing we need to understand to make a difference is we need to understand some of the mandates being passed down from the state. Um, we've seen a number of bills come forward recently. There's, uh, there's information saying that towns could be on the hook for up to 25% of teacher pension costs. Teachers obviously de you know, deserve every cent they get, but you know these are contracts that we had really no hand in negotiating, I believe. So you know that could definitely, I could, I could see that as having an impact on our budget and, you know, brass tacks here, you know, we can't educate our students without the proper financial resources. Um, another thing I've seen coming down the line are these, uh, there's three bills that were introduced in the state Senate uh, regarding school regionalization. There's uh, Senate Bill 457, forcing smaller districts into larger ones, Senate Bill 738, to develop a regionalization plan for towns with populations under 40,000, and Senate Bill 874, to establish a shared school services commission to develop that plan. Now, we've seen in Enfield sometimes consolidated services can be a good thing. It can bring new opportunities, maybe save a little bit of money. But you know what? That was all voluntary. And the truth is, at this point, we really don't have a full comprehensive understanding of what these bills could do. Um, so as I think I stated in the last meeting I was here through the chairman, perhaps we could 
um, send an invitation to our legislative delegation so they can update us on what could be the potential impacts from all these bills coming down from the state. And, you know, I just want to let everybody finally in the community know, um, you know, at the, you know, I'm just going to speak for myself here, but I have a feeling I'm speaking for other people. You know, everybody up here, we, we have one, we have at least have one thing in common. And that's that we want to make sure that Enfield children have all the educational opportunities to deserve. And it should be obvious from anyone that does their research and actually looks what our school system has to offer, that there are those opportunities um, for any student that wants to avail themselves to them. And if we enhance that by offering some additional recognition, some real life learning, and if we can also understand what's coming down the pipeline from the state, I think that'll really help us achieve the goal that we put forth in our motto to make a difference in our children's lives every day. Thank you. Uh, I know we have an invitation out to our state reps and to our state senator. I think they're due in, in, in March, one of the March meetings, I think. March 26th. I'll be back. Right. So they'll be here for that meeting. Ms. Hernandez. All right. Uh, so I just want to, whoa, that found very loud. Um, I'm going to talk for Tim. So, but um, one of the things I really I, I appreciate, Tim, um, with your opening remarks tonight, and Chris brought this up too, is um, when we were talking about the importance of debate and we were talking about the importance of civics is that um, I agree. We need to be able to have these conversations. We need to be able to connect. Um, I am unapologetic in my liberal stances. However, my best friends and the people that I love are Republicans, and I learn from them, and I'm better because of them, um, because they hold me accountable. And you know, we have exchanges of ideas. And the really the thing that I find important is that even though we might have differences in the ways that we achieve those goals, um, our goals are the same, and you know, we're we're going toward the same place. Um, so, I, you know, I wanted to say that. Um, Bob, I really appreciate I love history. Um, and as somebody who's relatively new to the town, I've only been here for four and a half years, um, these documents are really interesting to me. Um, so I appreciate that you brought them here tonight. Um, I thought, and, you know, I'm always interested in demographic information um, because to me, they do matter. Um, context matters. Um, you know, when we talk about our students and we talk about the demographics of our students and we talk about the barriers to our students, um, it, we have to consider those when we're looking at our academic su success. Um, I, you know, as I'm very clearly a Caucasian woman, I can't speak to that, but I can speak to neurodiversity. Um, and I know that, you know, I just, I guess I want to say that I want to put this in context about why it's so important to speak to the strengths of our students. I loved having the diversity here. Um, but I don't think that a lot of people know that um, uh, Asperger was actually named after the fellow who identified um, Asperger syndrome as part of being the autistic on the autistic spectrum. Um, we, um, that's no longer in the DSM-5. Um, but it's all under the autistic umbrella. However, um, when they became, when they started that definition and the diagnosis, um, what he said was that people who had autism or who were autistic um, were people in the sense of how they appeared, but inside they were not. And that affects the way that we treat our children with disabilities. Um, in the disability community, we talk about presuming competence. We talk about the importance of setting those expectations for the people um, who diversity in ethnicity, diversity in you know neuro neurodiversity, um, and so that's you know it's what it's really why it's important to be careful of the way that we talk about um, ethnicity, race, religion. Um, disabilities, uh, because we internalize that. And I think a lot of times people who, were, who are on the autistic spectrum were told that we were less than for so long, so why would we ever achieve more? And that's one of the things that I really appreciate about Enfield Public Schools and some of the things that I've heard from the students here. Um, and we heard it tonight about you know using all the strengths and using all the colors and using all the things that we have. And that's the standard that we set. We presume competence. 
um, we look for the strengths of those individuals and we capitalize on those strengths and we honor that diversity and we are better together. Um, if it's the color of our skin, if it's our religion, if it's if we're Republican or Democrat. Um, so I appreciate this opportunity and I made up for Tim's time. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. Mr. Poe. I have really short comments tonight, but um, I also want to echo, echo gratitude to Mr. Tcats for all of the historical information and research that he brings us because I think it's really important when you're trying to figure out where you're going to recognize where you've been and where your community has been and who it has been and who it is now and who it will be. Um, and I just think that it's so important to keep all that information in perspective. So I know I, for one, am going to be pouring over the things that Bob brought to us tonight because I think it's fascinating and I think that his dedication to knowing where our town has been and where it's going is worthwhile you know I, I think that's great um, and again comments sort of about who are we and what can we expect of ourselves and, and what is reasonable to expect as well um, I hear a lot of the well you know maybe Enfield's not really at the top when it comes to the whole state and, and kind of like Bob alluded to. But that's why we need to look at why. We need to look at all of the different pieces of what's going on in our community that maybe prevent us from being number 10 instead of number 150 whatever. Um, and it's not necessarily anything that's anyone's fault, but it's something that we have to be honest with ourselves about and really recognize you know, as a community, who are we? and where are we now and what can we do to make it so we can break out of that level that we're at right now what can we do to reduce those barriers or try to remove them as completely as possible to try to make those changes because we can say oh well the teachers can just do more all they want but so many of these barriers have nothing to do with what's going on inside the classroom and we need to recognize that and and be a little honest with ourselves um, when it comes to that so that we can really you know take into consideration are we doing well for what we've got what can we do better what can we remove you know as a community to enhance our students success um, so I just think that's so important um, other than that my real only comment was about the Enfield Street Schools PTO meeting in March um, <laughs> so from heavy to light um, Enfield Street Schools next meeting is March 13th at 530 so hopefully folks can go Miss yeah. Riley <clears throat> well, I'm gonna jump around on my comments here but going off of what you just said Ashley and what Sarah just said <clears throat> is a prime example we need to know who we are and what needs we serve is a prime example of why the um, the Senate I mean the proposed bill to regionalize schools would not work for Enfield I mean we need Enfield knows their kids and we need to cater to those kids and when you regionalize five six towns together you're not going to be able to you know cater to the needs of each you know specific group that you have within the school so that's a you know <clears throat> a prime reason for you know not having regionalization of districts now of services is a whole different story and I'm okay with regionalization of services if they can help <clears throat> you know the community at, at large um, but that's a good point that you both bring up about um, you know knowing who your kids are that's important so going backwards, where I was going to start, um, I wanted to thank everybody who came out Saturday night to First Readers Trivia Night. It was a wonderful event. Uh, we, realized, uh, we raised a lot of money, and it was a good time had by all. So I want to thank everybody who came. Um, like Mr. Dresick said, our ceremony is on March 11th at 6 p.m. Um, in the auditorium at Enfield High School. And we are certifying 166 readers this time, so that's a good number. <laughs> yep, including mine too. So <laughs> say, hey, we're gonna have a couple, bunch of people up there. Um, and uh, along with the reading thing, Friday is uh, Read Across America Day um, in honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday, which is actually on Saturday. Um, so I know I'm gonna be going to a couple of schools in town to read out loud, and I'm sure. Probably other people up here are going to be doing the same thing. Uh, so that'll be a great time. Um, 
I looked at the governor's budget because um, I sent it um, on a crack email. Um, so I checked it out. It looks like that we might be okay. Um, there is definitely going to be an 8% increase this year from CREC. Um, we talked about that in finance last meeting. Um, obviously, I have concerns over the fourth di district regionalization that I just talked about. So they're having a public hearing this Friday. Um, so I'm thinking about trying to write something to submit for um, written testimony to speak against that, um, since I'm not going to be able to be there. Um, then I also have concerns about the proposed 25% shifting of teacher pension to the districts, but I don't have enough information at this point to elaborate on it yet. But it's concerning since it's more funds that we have to um, allocate for, and it raises a whole new set of variables and questions that I don't know the answers to yet. So more to come on that, but that was all I had. Can I ask uh, Charlotte a question about Please. the correct thing? You said it was, did you say it was an 8% increase? 8% increase did, this year. Do you think, did I give you a number of, like given our current enrollment there, do you have any idea what that would do to our budget, the increase in our budget? Um, uh, you don't, don't need know. it now, but if you I'm could, not, if, if you have it. I can get the number. That'd be great. Definitely. I appreciate that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Point of order, Kathy. Should we add this item agenda now during her comments? So you want to take care of this? So we want to I have to make a motion. Yes. Okay. So I want to move that the Enfield Board of Education will take any actions deemed appropriate regarding approving the per prospective supply contract for transportation. Moved by Miss Riley. Second. Seconded by Miss Mr. Blank. Any discussion on adding this, on. adding Hold this on. to the agenda? To new business. Add it to new business. Under new business. You need to suspend the rules. Suspend the rules. To suspend the rules. 11C with what you just said. Okay. So, so I move to suspend the rules on 11C. I'll yes. Second that. Okay. So, so as amended, seconded by Miss LeBlanc. Any discussion? And then do roll call. And we want a roll call vote. Okay. Mr. Neville. Yes. Mr. Ryder. Yes. Mr. Renier? Yes. Mrs. Depoe? Yes. Mr. Rutledge? Yes. Mrs. Riley? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Hernandez? Yes. Chairman Cruzel? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Any other board <coughs> comments? Mr. Ryder? Uh, yes. Uh, briefly, uh, just a couple points for uh, the Eli Whitney, Whitney Wolves family. Um, Yankee Candle Fundraiser is now underway through March 8th. Info is all available online at enfieldpto.com slash Eli Whitney. Um, they're also doing a, a night at Nomads in mid-March. Um, that's also on the website. Spring Picture Day is before we meet again, so that's March 6th. Um, and I attended the instrumental concert last night, and I just want to thank the music teacher and the music department at Enfield Public Schools, and specifically the music teacher at Eli Whitney. Um, and at all the schools, I think that they do a great job. And um, I know my fifth grader um, practices hard in her room and gets frustrated at times. And it might not be her path, <laughs> but she enjoys it. And she did well last night. And I wanted to thank the Whitney Wolves for putting on a great concert, both strings and instrumental band. So thank you. I apologize. Mr. Renier, you were before. So. Um, I'd just like to. Um and my liaison hat to Hazardville Memorial. Uh, just mentioned that uh, they have a PTO meeting on March 13th. Uh, on March 15th, they have a monthly assembly at 1.30 for rooms 7, 11, and 13. Uh, on March 21st, which is a pretty cool night, is the McTeacher night uh, for the McDonald's on Elm Street uh, from 4.30 to 7.30, where teachers and administrators go in and uh, work at McDonald's so students can go in and see their teachers uh, and get some funds back to the school PTO. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then on the 29th, the Spring Sports Day uh, for both uh, Hazardville and Eli Whitney uh, for students to wear their uh, spring sports wear or favorite colors. Um, on that day for the rest of the schools. Um, I just wanted to um, just say how great it was to have the students come before us this evening. Um, and, and really, um, one of the themes that uh, we've had from this board is having students uh, come before us and show their um, 
the, the greatness that is NPL, uh, whether it be from Buzz Robotics to music uh, to theater uh, to just um, all around being a, a good role model. Um, I think it speaks volumes for our kids. Um, a lot of times there's always the concern and the question of, you know, where, where is our youth going? And, and I think we can say strongly in Enfield uh, that our, kid, our kids really have good values. Um, and that's because of good parents. And that's because of uh, good educators. Um, and I think that uh, the fact that teachers are here uh, when they don't need to be, uh, supporting the students that are here uh, in their initiatives, um, and seeing the same, the same names over and over is just wonderful. So I just wanted to uh, make that point. Uh, and finally, uh, in regards to the, um, the budget, now I'd be remiss um, if I didn't just speak briefly on what I've seen, and obviously it's nothing that's official or final, uh, but I, I was quick um, when the uh, former administration uh, had, had offered severe cuts to Enfield uh, through uh, Malloy's um, crazy, insane uh, budget of slashing us by 21%. Um, and looking at the budget as it is now, um, I, I would say that the current uh, administration and, and Governor Lamont, um, it, it's everyone's going to have to take hits somewhere. Um, that's just the theme of the budget. But I think uh, where Enfield's sitting right now is, is a pretty comfortable spot. Um, I think they, they understand the importance of our district. Um, and I mean, crack is crack. They're going to do what they, they're going to do. Um, but in regards to what the Nelamont's doing, ECS uh, formula that's rolling out, um, I think a lot of it's very transparent. Um, and he's very transparent in regards to the teacher's pension. Um, with with uh, the former administration, we were kind of like, is he is he not going to pass it down? Is he you know we're all stressing out about it. Good, bad, or indifferent, this, this guy is not holding any punches. He's telling us exactly what's coming down the pike and what he's looking to propose. Um, so, again, uh, not that it's going ever easy not getting the money that we are owed, uh, but it's great that it's clear, concise, and it's not the 21% that we we're going to take in years past. And I think when push comes to shove and if we get what we're supposed to be getting and ECS um, is established the way it's supposed to be established, uh, I think it's going to be uh, good news for our district uh, as it currently sits. So let's uh, just, you know, keep calling the, the, admin, the uh, representatives and, and our state legislators and, you know, let them know uh, education is important for you and for the town and that's it. When is McEachern Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mick Educator Night is the 21st. March 21st. And it's the Hazard Ave in, Hazard, front, in uh, Brookside Plaza, in front of ShopRite. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, there's a Shamrock Shake addiction in my house, so I'll send him that way that night. Those are good. They're so good. They really are. <laughs> Anyone else? Comments before I go? So we did answer the question on the representatives. We're looking at a month from today, March 26th. Um, and I th oh, Buzz Robotics is having, speaking of Buzz Robotics, they're having their pasta supper tomorrow night at St. Bernard's Parish Hall on Hazard Ave from 5 to 8 o'clock, $10 a ticket. It's a great meal, and they always have a great turnout, and please help them out. It, it helps them for all their competitions. and. And, and just make it there and get, get them, help them out. Um, and that's about all I got. Mr. Neville. A, a question. I, we have a, I'm, glad, I'm glad we asked the question about the representatives because the 26 allows us to prepare. But maybe, you know, we've had them here a lot of times. And oftentimes they, they, they don't know what we're going to ask and they have to keep coming back to us. Could we yeah. propose some questions, yeah. maybe get it through yeah. the chair? And if you could send it to them, just so they have a, an idea of the things that are on their mind, and maybe they could bring something, or, or you know, send uh, them through me, and I'll send them to Kathy. Or would that be okay? Yeah. yeah. And then she'll send them down. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So we'll move on to unfinished business. We have none. Eleven uh, A. I want a motion to table this to our next meeting. Uh, we want to correct, correct some things on the application, so. We're going to table this. So moved by Mr. Neville, seconded by Mr. Poe. And so we're tabling 11A. Ideally to the next meeting. Ideally to the next meeting, yes. I, I, will, I will get in touch with him and have him reapply. There's just some discrepancies on his application. 
Um, roll call or hand vote? Okay, roll call, please. Okay. Mr. Neville? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Renier? Yes. Mrs. DePoe? Yes. Mr. Rutledge? Yes. Mrs. Riley? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Hernandez? Yes. Chairman Cruzel? Yes. Motion to table passes. So we're at 11B, uh, approval of the 2019-2020 school calendar. Do we need a motion first? Or? So moved. So moved by Mr. Rutledge, seconded by Mr. Neville. We tied. Uh, <laughs> and discussion, Mr. Dresick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So you have a draft calendar in your packets. Um, you know, per board policy, you have to adopt a calendar for the following school year by the conclusion of February, and the, the weather didn't cooperate at their last board meeting, so we're consolidating it, obviously, into, into this evening's discussion. Uh, we also have to share this with all of our union presidents to make sure there's no objections and any contractual obligations that are violated. Uh, they both assured me that they're not, and they're supportive of this. Um, the one thing that we do need to take under consideration, and um, under board policy 6111, which is which dictates that you actually adopt the school calendar. There is a provision in there that discusses if, um, you know, barring any contractual conflicts, when we would start school in regards to when Labor Day falls. Now, if you remember, this would be our second year in a row that we would actually return kids to school prior to Labor Day um, with the hopes of avoiding kids getting out in the last week of June like we had to experience last year. Um, unfortunately, because I know the policy committee is working diligently at uh, revamping all of our policies, they're a little lax on getting to this one, and I blame the liaison um, from the cabinet as to why they haven't <laughs> moved this one up the food chain to get, get this work done prior to. But unfortunately, if you do want to adopt the proposed calendar as it's, as it's presented this evening, you, as you did last year, you'd also have to waive that portion of, of policy 6111 um, because obviously we wouldn't be, we'd be starting school prior to Labor Day, so that wouldn't have an effect on, on the, the contractual, on the policy language. Um, there's one there's one quick thing I want to uh, post out because I've gotten some questions regarding this. Uh, you'll notice that our December break is quite lengthy next year. Unfortunately, it happens every five years uh, when Christmas falls, uh, typically on a Wednesday. That, that will leave that Monday the 23rd as a questionable day of do we bring kids and teachers and everyone back. Uh, and it's also not just a question of inconveniencing families that may have holiday plans. But you also have to take in consideration that we have to open all of our buildings for one day. Um, and it allows our buildings and grounds staff um, and our custodial staff to do some of the winter cleaning and things along those lines and get a longer longer period of time to do that. So I, I am proposing that we, we begin uh, the last day of school prior to winter break would be December 20th. Um, the good news with that is we actually would have our last day of school scheduled for June 11th, which is a day shorter than it is this year. So we're still getting out earlier um, with a firm graduation date of June 17th, which falls on a Wednesday weather permitting so do we need to amend the motion to waive the yes. uh, policy number six one one number line uh, number three so we need an amendment to the motion to waive the policy okay. moved by mr. Rutledge seconded by miss LeBlanc do I have a hand vote for the amendment right actually as a point of order would would this amended motion be to waive the policy and approve the school calendar or is this no. amended motion just to waive you can do it that way. You can waive the policy and adopt the calendar in yes. one motion. Yes, because if it wasn't including them both, we would have to table that, then address the. Okay, so we're the amending the. We're amending the original vote to waive the policy and approve the school and approve the school calendar. Yep. Okay, so we go to roll call on that, or do we need to vote the amendment first? It's all together. Okay, all in one. Okay. Mr. I just want to ask one, one question um, before we vote on it. Yes. Uh, I was just wondering, what's been the uh, reception of the uh, the three-hour delay um, from staff, school bus? Overwhelmingly popular. So much so there's, there was vast disappointment in the two-hour delay that we received last week. <laughs> and I've already had recommendations for this coming Thursday for a three-hour delay from staff, students, um, and anyone else who happens to see me anywhere. So <laughs> it's been very popular. <laughs> Any other discussion? Ms. Hernandez. It's not a question, but I just want to give you gratitude um, for making those calls that you've made recently. Um, you kept our students safe, and I really appreciate it. Yeah. They've been solid. Yeah, even though the mayor gives you hell for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Any other discussion? Mr. R discussion? Mr. Yeah. Ryder. No, I just wanted to say that I am all for the three-hour delays when they have to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I know it does inconvenience some parents that work 9 to 5. Um, it's a little difficult to send your child somewhere until the building opens. But I would rather get a day in, even mm -hmm. a shortened day, in December, January, February, or March than in June. Um, exactly. I think it benefits exactly. us long term, okay. and I appreciate that it, that it's in place. Um, I've had 95% positive feedback on it. Yeah. <laughs> I talked to a lot of parents. But. Mr. Neville. Just one other thing, too. Given what we're doing with joint facilities in terms of doing roofs, and if we're doing it right, the earlier we can get out in June, the more time we have during the summer and not during Thanksgiving yeah. to do yeah. a roof, okay, and work yeah, around the raindrops or the pellets or whatever. So I, I'd keep it. If I can just add, since we're on the yes, discussion please. and we have a large audience probably watching at home, just as a reminder to folks, not every television station recognizes a three-hour delay. So the best source of information at about 5.15 on the potential weather day morning is go to Twitter. That's the first place I know that it goes. Um, and then we try to send out the robocall around the 5.30, quarter to six time frame so it's not too early. I can speak from experience. I've had to call each and every newsroom that we're associated with. So those who rely so solely on television, with the exception of one station, and I won't give one a plug over another, um, three-hour delay isn't an option. So we actually have to call it, and they have to manually put it on there. My hope is that as more colleagues have discussed this concept with me, the more that go to it will become an option in the future. But that's the only concern. I, I did get a couple of calls from, from some parents saying, well, it wasn't on the radio at three hours, or this station didn't have it three hours. That's beyond our control, but we do have to physically call the stations every morning and let them know. So if you're watching at home, that's why. And make sure that you're signed up for School Messenger, because that's the best way to get the information directly. Mm -hmm. so. Like we always do at Enfield, we break ground for the rest of the state. Right. So just right. kudos to that. And any other discussion? Yep. Oh, Ms. Wiley, sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to sound like a broken record every time the calendar comes up. Um, but I still want to put the suggestion out there that Veterans Day, we eventually get it to be a half day or something, because our town is very, you know, heavily involved with veterans, especially when Wreath Across America comes. And I think that we could probably do a bang up job on Veterans Day, you know, with all the schools with some sort of veterans that curriculum day. that yeah. day. Agreed. Um, I would prefer that as well. You know, and then it would be a good, you know, I just think it would be a good thing. That's just my personal opinion. Being, being that it's a federal holiday, why? Couldn't we just assign the Friday before as Enfield Veterans Day? Because does anybody go to school on Veterans Day? You do. Yeah. Yeah. As State. a point of order, you can, um, as long as you're dealing with like veterans type issues. Okay. At the school event. You have to present a, vet a veterans curriculum, something surrounding recognition of veterans in your curriculum in order to hold school that day. The reason that we haven't obviously um, goes beyond. There's, there's been different opinions of further boards about taking that day off in, in remembrance and honoring. Um, also, coincidentally for us, because we are starting earlier, uh, we miss some of the professional learning days for staff prior to, because we come back the, the last week of, we have students coming back on the 28th. So that actually makes a bit of a convenient professional development day, and it really extends the, the Veterans Day holiday for families. So if you notice on this calendar, the students would be off on Monday and Tuesday. So it gives them a sort of a short break in November as well. We try to incorporate those PD days like we did in February to give a little bit longer breaks for kids, um, even though we bring our teacher, our staff back for professional learning. Mm. Are you sure the 12th looks like, like a half day? I, I was looking at the February one. I'm sorry. Those are early. Those are that's conferences. Early, I'm sorry. That's an early release day on the 12th. Yeah. Miss LeBlanc. Uh, this is just point of information. I think Tim can remember when we had the Snowtober storm. Back then, there was a lot of talk about how we were going to make up the days. But uh, one thing we have to remember is that the town is closed and buildings and ground is closed that day. Mm -hmm. So to open up the schools, it goes beyond just Enfield Public Schools. It also has to be in, in a partnership with the town piece of it, too. I didn't so, think about that. Yeah, so yeah. just keep that in mind. It's a discussion, if nothing else. Yeah, just something to think about. Mm -hmm. Mr. Neville. Yeah, I know I said I wasn't going to say anything during, but no, I No, go ahead. Sure. you got to make up for it. Go ahead. i got to try. i got to try. Dealing with the, the uh, infamous statewide calendar that they keep promising us and they keep canceling, um, do we have to worry about that in this? I did, wh what's the status of that? Because our calendar has to coincide if they ever go along with it. It, it has been delayed yet again. <laughs> um, I'm shocked. However, uh, we are in 
communication and it's given by RESC. So we would be in coordination with um, all the towns that would be essentially under the correct umbrella. Uh, and our vacation, it's, and it's really more so for vacation days um, and professional learning days, we do line up with our neighboring communities. It's not just beneficial that if the state ever does actually implement that, but we also have a lot of staff members who may not reside in town, but reside in a, a local town. So if if we're having April vacation on a different week than everyone else, it could cause problem for staff and for parents. So we try to remain consistent. This calendar does remain consistent with our other surrounding districts at our risk. Okay, I think we've beaten this to death. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Neville. Yes. Mr. Ryder. Yes. Mr. Renier. Yes. Mrs. Depoe. Yes. Mr. Rutledge. Yes. Mrs. Riley. Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc. Yes. Mrs. Hernandez. Yes. Chairman Crizel. Yes. Motion passes. So now we have a new 11C to take action, if any, on the deemed appropriate. Re take any regarding. regarding approving press. Prospective supply contracts for transportation. Motion. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion by Ms. LeBlanc, seconded by Mr. Neville. Mr. Dresig. So what the board will be voting on, as you know, we're in, in the process of negotiating a, a new contract with Smith Bus Company for our, our transportation. For It would be a three-year agreement, as the board has. Uh, Mr. Chairman has a copy of, of, of the agreement. So essentially, the vote, uh, an affirmative vote tonight would enter into a new three-year agreement with Smith Bus. Uh, again, like we have in the past, with an option for two additional years if both parties were to agree. So, do we have to word the motion that way, or how to? Or, or you're good. We just need to word the motion to accept the con. Uh, so, board accepts the contract with Smith to Bus Company. the with motion the to accept the Smith Bus Incorporated contract through, from July 1, 2019, through June 30th, 2022. So moved. moved by. No, wait a minute. We had, who was the original? Uh, oh, Me. Mr. Blank, do you do you re, re motion? Re motion and Mr. Neville, you re second? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we good? Any other discussion? It's like I'm new at this or something. Roll call, please. Mr. Neville? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Renier? Yes. Mrs. Depoe? Yes. Mr. Rutledge? Yes. Mrs. Riley? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Hernandez? Yes. Chairman Cruzel? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you all. Number 12, board committee reports. A curriculum. We had our, our meeting uh, last night, and uh, thanks to uh, Mrs. Zalicki, we got uh, the minutes in hand right now. So thank you very much. That was a speedy job and, and, and well done. Once again, thank you. Um, I think we'd all agree, the three of us, that was a great meeting. Uh, uh, what the, the one part of it was just really just a, you know um, uh, approving a couple of changes in, in for the uh, course of studies, uh, and that's on the last um, section of the of the minutes. But the first two, which have to do with opportunities that were presented to us that we could new opportunities that we could provide to our students, and I think this particular committee is always looking as much as we can to provide new and innovative opportunities. So kids have more choices and can, can and try things on. Mr. Degg came with um, uh, Michelle Middleton, and they presented two things, two articulation agreements. One, basically, they want us to enter into an articulation agreement, agreement to, to work with Springfield Technically, a Technical Community College, STCC or STIC, in the area of mechanical engineering technology. And under the agreement, two of our current courses at the high school, Introduction to Engineering Design and Principles of Engineering, would allow students to earn credits at STIC. This could help uh, students to obtain an associate degree at STIC if they were interested in this area. And STIC also has an articulation agreement with Northeastern University College of Professional Studies. Because of this, students would have the opportunity to continue at STIC and earn a bachelor's degree from Northeastern. I mean, you know, that's that, that's incredible. And, and basically uh, pay the, the cost of stick and not the cost of Northeastern, which is a fine university. Um, Mr. We asked him what we needed to do here. He needed some more details, and and, and he he wanted our uh, kind of uh, temporary approval to, to to move in this thing, and and we gave it to him. He's going to come back to us hopefully within a month. He's going to let us know. We're hopeful at our next meeting that we can approve. We can recommend this back to the board. And once we do that, as with the next one I'm going to introduce, uh, we're going to ask him to come here and explain this. This is a neat process, 
and it's something that uh, I think, um, you know, somebody talked about us being on the cutting edge here. I think we're getting in the right place here at that point. The second opportunity has to do with uh, an, a partnership with 3M. Uh, we used to have a 3M plant in town, down not too far from where the credit the teachers' credit union is down there now. It's something else right now, but they have a plant out in Stafford Springs, I believe, and and plants all over the, all over the country. Um, what they're looking to do is partner with Enfield Public Schools and Stafford Public Schools. Basically, they would come up with a, a map, a manufacturing academic partnership program in this area. The purpose of the program would be to identify students interested in the electromechanical field and give them opportunities. They're hoping to produce workers they can hire, which make a connection before you get out of school and not after you get out of school. And Phil has been chosen to participate because we already have an electromechanical pathway through college connections with his Nantuk, although it doesn't have any students enrolled in it at this point. Through the program, 3M would provide his Nantuk money with which they would purchase equipment. As Nantuk would get this equipment to Enfield Public Schools for 10 weeks of use and staff it for 10 weeks of use. 3M will also pay to send two teachers to training this summer. The equipment provided by 3M would be used in our electronics courses open to students in grades 9 to 12 and our robotics courses open to students in grades 10 through 12. The hope is that these courses would entice students to participate in the Electromechanical College Connection Program with, with as Nantuk. Again, he needs to get more information. He needs to bring it back. Obviously, it has to go through the superintendent to, to deal with any kind of partnership agreement. But uh, we, we asked him to get all the information he needs it, share it with you, and bring it back to us for recommendation back to the board. So at some point, and we're hoping sooner rather than later, it, we're going to ask to have him put on the agenda with um, Mrs. Ms. Middleton uh, to present it to the board. It's, it's a neat program. I, I think. Uh, he, he does wonderful work for us, as you, you guys already know. But um, it's like another exciting meeting, Mr. Renier. You know, it really, it's just, uh, it, it, wasn't it a great meeting? We had a, it, he's just a great guy. So um, something that I think you'll all want to hear. <coughs> so as we said at the last meeting, we're going to bring more of these things back so we can also educate ourselves and let the people who talk to us know the opportunities that are out there for our kids. Mm -hmm. I wish they had this kind of stuff when I was in school. I mean, we were all stuck in the same course. And that was it. This allows kids to get their feet wet, try it on for size, see if it fits, um, and it's um, it's great. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nevin. You guys, have anything you want to add or any questions for Mr. Nevin? Um, I just wanted to sort of clarify or draw attention to the fact that these two programs that Mr. Dake brought us. Um, target a large, a potentially large number of students. Because on the one hand, you have students who may pursue a two-year degree in engineering, you have <coughs> students who may pursue a four-year degree in mechanical engineering, and then you have students who may be pursuing a two-year technical degree. Um, and then, you know, they've got their foot in the door at 3M. So I just think that when you really think about it, two little programs can potentially touch so many kids on various tracks. And I think we talk a lot about making sure that all of our students on all of these different tracks are getting good opportunities that are worthwhile to them. Um, and I think that this, you know, what Mr. Dig has brought us is just another excellent example of the way that we're trying to do that. Ms. Hernandez. Yeah, I, I think I just want to echo, um, well, also say, yes, we do have the best committee. It's so, it's so exciting to see the innovation and the forward thinking um, of, of Michelle Middleton and her in the staff surrounding her um, and it cut it kind of ties back for me for what we were talking about earlier how you know the differences in words sometimes you know between people liberal and um, conservative but to me like these opportunities that we're talking about for me I term it as social justice you know where you have people have access to education and that it's low cost and these things um, I think my conservative friends might call it fiscal responsibility um, because we're giving them this opportunity to you know get careers that pay $35 an hour to start um, and keep the cost low. I think it, I think uh, Mr. Dake said they could get a bachelor's degree for $20,000. Um, that's that's phenomenal. And I really, um, it's just, it's an excellent opportunity and it reaches all learners. You know, we're right, we, we uh, celebrate our National Honor Society. We celebrate so many people um, for their academic excellence, but we're also working so hard to provide uh, pathways for people who want to have, um, you know, more of a, a trade route um, and give them opp those opportunities for good jobs. So 
I couldn't, I can't say enough about um, the people who are involved in curriculum. Um, they're, they're amazing, so, and we re really appreciate it. All right, let's just skip the 13 because the other committees don't mean anything. How do you guys hold up to that? <laughs> I think we're, the finance committee is pretty cool. We're good. All right, 12B, finance. We're pretty cool. Okay, lots of numbers. Yeah. It's really fun. It's good times. <laughs> no, I mean, every meeting we go line by line over, you know, things are in the Very budget. Exciting. So, you know, we talk about. Very lively. Uh, yeah, it Very is. Lively yes, we do. We, we have good discussions there. Don't forget the talented and gifted portfolio. Yeah, yes. Yes, we do talk about the talented and gifted profile a lot, the portfolio, and how the stock market's doing. Mr. Rutledge yeah, provides a lot of insight time, on that. It? It's crazy mm -hmm. time, yep. Um, so right now, everything looks on track. Like I said before in the comments, there's definitely the 8% increase. I will get you the numbers um, for how much it's going to be um, for correct. And uh, the next meeting is on March 18th. And that's having fun. Yes. <laughs> All right, Mr. Policy. <laughs> you're the, you're the, you're the, you're yes, the head of the three R's. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, in front of you guys, you should have a packet. Uh, that is a present from the policy committee. <laughs> no other committee brought you presents, but we did. Um, thank you to Kathy for proposing and putting together the 4,000 series, uh, the beginning of the 4,000s. Uh, as we know, that it's it's quite the quite the tackle. So we did this one in sections. Uh, so these are the official ones that have been approved. Uh, policy committee will continue to go through the 4,000s to approve the rest of them uh, in a short time. Uh, but if you peruse through that, just add that to your binder. Those are all approved policies from your favorite subcommittee. Um, I'd also like to mention that on March 6th the policy um, committee will be meeting um, and that will be happening at the uh, Alcorn building and anyone who would like to attend please do. Um, I am unaware if there may be a scheduling conflict with myself. Uh, if that is the, the, the case, we do have the subcommittee secretary, which would be one Scott Ryder, uh, who would be chairing the committee uh, in my absence if that does happen to be. Um, but let's see if that happens. Uh, but there will be a meeting. And uh, feel free to bring some drinks and uh, some crackers and some Capri Suns. Make it a night. We'll bring the crackers. <laughs> 12D leadership, we have none. 12E joint facilities, we're meeting this Thursday to go over proposals for our, for RFQs for our uh, master plan for buildings. 12F JFK, um, they met last week and shortlisted the architects. We've shortlisted it down to four, and they will be interviewing with them shortly. Uh, G Joint Security, um, Mr. Mr. Rainier. I was just going to say, we, we are meeting um, the, the three people who are part of the Joint Sec uh, Security Committee is also those who are part of the Policy Committee because we're so cool we do it twice. Um, I can let everyone know that uh, this town is very uh, dedicated to the security of our buildings uh, and that we work very hand in hand with the, uh, with the town and all of our first responders. Uh, it's a great committee and um, we will meet again in a couple of months. Ms. Wright. So just to add on the whole finance thing, um, I was, I wanted to, yeah, yes, I wanted to reach out to the chair of the curriculum committee and see if maybe we can reopen the dialogue about the TAG program that we had talked about before. Cool. Thank you. Are we due for an insurance point? Isn't that? Isn't that in March? Yeah, that's in March, I believe. Hold on. I didn't get an invitation yet. Hold on. The insurance subcommittee. Insurance. That should be done. It's in March. I just don't it's have it. It's in March. I just don't have it. It's either the 5th or the 12th. Oh, don't tell me it's the 5th. I it is the 12th. Okay, perfect. March 12th, 4.30 in the infirmary is the joint insurance committee meeting. Okay. That's perfect. So that's it for committees. Thank you. Uh, number 13, approval of minutes, special Board of Ed meeting minutes, February 20th, 2019. Moved by Mr. Rutledge, seconded by Ms. Riley. Any discussion? A hand vote. All in favor? We got 
Tim's up. Yeah. So we got everybody and Mr. Poe is abstaining. So we have eight, eight in favor, one abstention. Uh, approval of accounts and payroll, Ms. Riley, yep. from that beautiful finance meeting. <laughs> The Finance Committee met on February 11th, 2019 to review financial statements for the month of January year to date and to examine various documents related to finances. Our review concluded that there is nothing significant to report to the board. I move that we accept the superintendent certification as follows. I hereby certify that in the month of January, total expenditures amount to $6,749,155.09. Broken down between payroll totaling $3,952,901.85 and other accounts totaling $2,796,253.24. All payments have been made in accordance with the approved budget and are properly accounted for within the books of accounts. Copies of approval for check invoices are properly documented. Moved by Ms. Riley, Second. seconded by Mr. Rutledge. Any discussion? All in favor? We have nine and nine to four, zero against. No line item transfers? No line item transfers. Madam Secretary, any correspondence or communications? There is none. None. Do we have a need for executive session? All right, we have a need for executive session to go into uh, matters related to personnel and collective bargaining. Motion. Do I have a motion by Ms. LeBlanc, seconded by Mr. Neville? No. Any discussion? All in favor? We are in executive session, at, and we will not be coming back to TV. Good night, and thank you.